May the fourth be with you. Welcome to Trash Arts Tick with myself, Ryan. And today we actually have a bit of a special edition. So we're going to be talking everything Star Wars. And, and uh, I'm actually going to be joined by Kieran um, Edwards and also Mike Reed. Uh, so yeah, let's get stuck into it. I hope you guys enjoy. We have a, a massive discussion around Star Wars. So yeah, please, please take a listen. So, wanted to introduce Mike Reed, and uh, we've also brought back Kieran Edwards. So, we're going to be discussing um, Star Wars, and uh, May the Fourth be with you, sort of in appreciation for obviously it being May the Fourth. Um, so, guys, how you doing? Good. Yeah, good. Thank you, dude. Yeah, great. Thank you. Excellent. Excellent. Good. Well, very nice in these current circumstances to have you both back on board again. Yes, thank you. Thank you, good. Thank you, dudes. No problems, no problems. So, really, I just wanted to fire the first question out there. Is, um, what makes you guys love Star Wars? After you, Mike. Okay, well, well, for me, um, I, sp- I suppose there's, there's different phases. I, I mean, today, what I love about Star Wars really is it has to be like the production design and kind of all the kind of behind the scenes stuff. Um, Whereas as a kid, I loved all the spaceships and lasers. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. You know, but as a kid, I, I, you know, I became interested in how the spaceships and lasers got put on the screen. Yes. Um, back, and back then, there were some really good documentaries about how the original trilogy was made. Um, they weren't yeah. so much sort of marketing material. You could actually learn stuff off of those documentaries. And in a way, Star Wars is responsible for me having an interest in filmmaking at all. Absolutely. Uh, oh, nice. So, yeah, so so I would say the the over the overarching love for me is the production design, you know, the robots and the and the lived in universe, the spaceships, just the design principles of the whole universe, really. Yeah, I think I think there's a there's um, a lot of practicality that goes into it as well. Like I know that the prequels yeah. were heavily criticised for being too much use of CGI whereas if you think to Absolutely. whenever they rebooted it again and you had the continuation of the Star Wars saga with the Force Awakens they kept it very practical a lot of the points and there was a lot of puppetry right. and stuff and um, yeah I think models. that's Mod- yeah models as well wasn't that exactly like, I think Yoda in the originals was even a puppet um, <clears throat> yeah 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 and then it was the prequels where they kind of did the first CGI version of them of course because I don't know how they would have managed to sort of have a Puppet Yoda flying around in Attack of the Clones, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, backflips and uh, jumping off things and throwing stuff around. Yeah, right. exactly, exactly. What about you, Karen? Well, a, a bit like, a bit like Mike, really. It was um, straight away. I was just in love with just the whole, this whole universe that George Lucas created. Um, this, this, you know, we've all seen spaceships flying around into space, etc. Like, but when you saw the X wings, Tie Fighters. All of that, it was just like, wow, you know, I just thought like, what is this, you know? And being a kid watching it, I just was just so so taken aback by like the ships, um, the, the characters, like the good guys, bad guys, and it's just how the Empire like controls the galaxy. And you've only got like a handful of rebel fighters to kind of fight back. That true underdog. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, and I just thought, man, the light, like lightsabers. Yeah. Like, what is this? You know, it's like, wow, this is just awesome. And I suppose, really, I've just kind of remained as a child for all the Star Wars films, you know. I just absolutely, like, love everything about them. Um, Jedi, Sith, just the whole, this whole universe is created, man. It's just like, wow, you know. Like, like Mike says, when you're a kid, you're watching these ships flying around and lasers and explosions, and you're just like, this dude dressed in black. And it's like, whoa, you know. And... <laughs> And, and again, like, you know, it was the sound effects for me. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, the sound effects have lived on, haven't they? Yeah. Oh, the Foley effects are just like how they're made. Yeah, the it's sound it's very, they're very organic, aren't they? Because kind of at the time, in sort of like late 70s, the, the fashion was to have like synthesised laser effects and stuff. If you look at other yeah. kind of science fiction films, they're, they're just terrible sound effects. Really <laughs> cheesy. Yeah. But, but, yeah. You know, and, and another like distinct memory I have. One, I think it might be the making of Empire, or maybe it's the making of Star Wars. There, there's a, it's burned into my memory for some reason. It's, it's the, the sound designer Ben Burr cool. as he's discovering one of the sounds for the laser guns and he, and he or laser blasts, and he's just like got a 
spanner or something and he's tapping like a guide wire on a on a pylon and you know yeah a noise and it's just oh, like nice. wow <laughs> and that's yeah. burned and and because i've got quite an interest in sound design and sound recording myself um, good man good man and uh i always think back to that and i always think yeah try not to synthesize stuff i mean mm. you know, take an organic recording and, and maybe process it a little um but that that kind of bedrock has to be like a real sound you know and and there's stories like um some of the millennium falcon sound effects are like uh, uh something like bad um uh like air conditioning unit in in the ilm offices <laughs> with malfunction so like they recorded it and like they mixed it into the falcon when it can't start and stuff and you think oh, it's just brilliant i love the idea of these really kind of like mundane sound effects being applied and mixed into like this this universe that and and all the sound effects not you don't question them they all seem really natural yeah yeah you don't yeah. think well, that can make that noise you just it just they match up it, it's brilliant it makes it more real i think and it, as real yeah. as it can be but you know what i mean you kind of i know that whenever i watch a star wars film you come immaculately engrossed within it um, but you, like you're saying, Mike, you never for once question the sounds or, you know, even the complete um, sound of um, a lightsaber, whenever it's ignited, the like that little delay and stuff. And he, one of the like things I love about the lightsaber sound is the way that they, um, <clears throat> well, what they did with Kylo Ren's one, because it's a, cra- a cracked uh, kyber crystal, it like crackles. So it's like, it has like a really yeah. unstable edge to it. Um, and I just love that. I thought that even though it's a little like attention to detail, that was just fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. yeah all the little nuances and stuff. Yeah. It's all, it's all brilliant. And, and even, and I think that follows through into like the costume design and the creature design. Oh, yeah. yeah. You absolutely. know, they, they kind of, there's, there's an attention to detail that um, is, is often imitated, but, rarely equaled um and i guess you know because i mean ilm are, they still are really world leaders in what they do um but i mean you know i mean ilm started off as like a bunch of students in a, in a warehouse oh, <laughs> so they are brilliant, man. using anything and everything cool. sorry it was the- using anything and everything that they possibly could yeah, really. yeah. You know, and yeah. it's mixing mixing all the different sounds together isn't it like yeah, yeah. And what I creature would sound brilliant. like what? I was saying, going back about the uh, the making of Star Wars, and um, like you know, I remember being a kid and going into the library with my mum, and um, I saw it on the shelf of video, and I was like, oh, it's like how they made Star Wars. Oh, can, can, can I take it out? Just, well, do you, do you, well, you don't really want to like you know, like like the, like the magic will be taken away if you see how they make it. And I really wanted to look, like know how they made it. But she, she came across like, oh, you know, no, they'll, they'll ruin it for you. Spoil the magic. Uh, did I, you ever... I mean, I, I didn't spoil the magic for me at all. It, 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 oh, no, know, dude, I wish I did, I did now. Yeah, it, it, even, even though, I mean, the first one I saw was The Making of Empire Strikes Back. I, I really? didn't do The Making of Star Wars for probably 10 years after, I you know, because that, that one's introduced by the two droids in the, the Making of Star Wars. Oh. Um, the Making of Empire is, is Mark Hamill, I think, is mainly... Uh, presenting that, and, and I just and there's a little bit of film history in it as well, and it, I was just absolutely captivated as a, as, as a child, and yeah, and, and all the what they were talking about with the blue screen and the chemical processing, it all sunk in. Mm. You know, I mean, obviously, I've, I've never ever done any kind of chemical processing special effects. I mean, obviously, <laughs> digitally now, it's just like yeah, yeah, it's amazing, but. But obviously, again, it was like Lucasfilm and ILM that, that drove a lot of the progress there. I mean, I forget uh, the guy who wrote Photoshop. Um, the original version was uh, was it no? I can't remember. It's, it's one of the ILM guys, I think. No oh, way! Wow, that's that's brilliant. I never yeah. knew that. That's really interesting. Yeah, yeah, good. that's a cool fact. Awesome man. Um, yeah, I gave it. I'm sure it's true. <laughs> no, it really. Is. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we'll have people coming after you after this if it's wrong. <laughs> yeah, I say no, no. It's so, so. Oh, sorry. Wasn't <laughs> me. Up there. Sorry. I think following on that trend of everything and its attention to detail, like it, the costumes, fantastic. Um, I think the the design of the different creatures and what 
even them creatures sound like. But even following on yeah. from that, like John Williams' score, it's oh, just oh, dude, yeah. like that is unmatched, it's unparalleled. Not, yeah. And didn't they originally, when, when George Lucas had it, didn't he um, play some of the um, host of the Planet Suite by host? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah they kind of said to John Williams, I want it like this. If you listen to parts, so I think it's Mars, it sounds a bit like um, the approach to Death Star, I think, it's kind of bits of segments of that. But yeah, I mean, I, I think it's definitely, definitely an inspiration, and obviously uh, John Williams took some of that on board. But yeah, I'm. I'm yeah, as, again, as a child, hearing that, that's probably, that probably the first orchestral score I'd heard in a half-decent auditorium, you know, being in the cinema. Wow. And it was like, oh, holy crap, that's like amazing. <laughs> and then you've got, yeah, you. you've got the Star Destroyer coming overhead, and you're like, wow, oh, man, like, yeah. holy crap. <laughs> this is like, this is like, it kind yeah, of it puts you out of your depth, but in a nice way. Yeah. Sorry, Mike, what were you going to say? No, I was, I was just saying it's just like, uh, and again, as, as a child, that every kind of Star Wars film introduced me to something new that I kind of hadn't seen at the cinema before. Probably because of how old I was, you know, sort of like ten-ish or whatever. Brilliant. Yeah, because because like you know, again, the first Star Wars I'd never seen a, a, a sort of convincing film populated with aliens and spaceship that, that kind of seemed real. And I remember with like Empire, I, I remember thinking, you know, the Hoff battle. I've never seen like walking mechanical things like that. Like, yeah. yeah. Well, and the, and the, like, that blew my mind. That did. Is, uh, yeah, are you going cool. with ATAT or ADAT? Yeah. yeah. Oh yes, ADAT. <laughs> yeah, I would go yeah, ADAT. You know, and, and then you know, with, with Jedi, you've got. I do like you know. The, I find it really atmospheric. The kind of Jabba's palace stuff, and then you know, the yeah. attack of the Death Star, all that stuff. It's the yeah. speed and velocity, yeah. and, and it's like, whoa, it's like it's like brilliant. I love how in um, Return of the Jedi, they actually wanted his lightsaber to originally be blue, so Luke's, but because of yeah. whenever he first ignites it. It, they had the black, like the blue background of the sky, so you couldn't see the lightsaber. So then they changed it to green. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's nice. <clears throat> Which is really interesting when you think about it now, because the lore has gotten so much deeper, and each lightsaber yeah. color has its own meaning as to what kind of Jedi they are and what kind of practices they have and stuff. And um, so yeah, just I thought that was a nice little bit of interesting facts i suppose yeah 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 man i think as well um what defined the series for me is if you think star wars the original star wars nothing can touch that like that is a Absolutely. piece of brilliance and you know that's what got the fans back because i think lucas never really had um a plan to do a sequel or he didn't think he could do a sequel so then when empire yeah. rocked around like that was what 20 odd years or 10 years before i was born but um when I watch that, and even now when I watch it, the way that it's shot and the way that they use the light to just bounce off Vader, like, it, and I think in the whole of the Star Wars original trilogy, I think Vader's only actually ever present and is only given something like 36 minutes screen time, which is crazy. Yeah. Like, A yeah. little, little bit of trivia about the Darth Vader costume, in definitely in Star Wars, and I think maybe in Empire... Is they thought that under the lighting, um, you might not be able to see the detail on the masks, so if, and, and you can see this on in the HD versions that, like, like kind of alternating bits of his helmet on the cheek are like painted silver. Oh, um, yeah. never ever noticed before. But when you look, you think, oh yeah, that, that's painted silver, and it, it, but it brings it out, and it still looks black when you're not thinking about it. It's really weird, but when you yeah, have it, and then in Jedi, they, that was the first film I think where they didn't have kind of like his cheek painted silver and it was basically done for the lighting because they were really worried that it would just look like a black mush on the camera you know um yeah amazing because there's there's these 4k restorations of the original trilogy which yeah. really do I, mean, I remember seeing the uh, star wars for the first time in hd and i remember the looking behind Luke in his X-Wing, you see, like, bits of, like, vacuum cleaner sort of in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it just looks... It looks a little... It does lose a little bit of the magic. 
it's like obviously it's, when you see it on VHS, it's all a bit fuzzy, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's cool. <laughs> The rewind and fast forwarding. I remember my mum used to tell me off for leaving a video at the end. So rather than once you finish watching the film, you press stop and then you re rewind, like rewind reset. Time. Yeah, <laughs> she used to hate me for it. <laughs> Notorious for it. Um, I said with every Star Wars film, I just used to watch it. Watch it right at the very end. Watch all the, the end credits. Listen to the, the music at the end. Yeah. Stop it. Rewind it back. And play it again. <laughs> Or you move on to the next one and then start the trilogy. Like, again, once yes. you've finished it. <clears throat> I remember... You think, man, they've been released and re-released so many times on, on, on home oh. media. I mean, I, I bought the... I had the full screen, the wide screen, the wide yeah. screen THX, the DVDs. I mean, I gave up yeah. the DVDs. I'm like, you know what, I'm not buying them again. It's like, yeah, right. the Blu-rays and you now 4K and stuff. I think even... It's just when you go... When, do you remember when they came out of the cinema and the was it the nineties? The like, like was it ninety? Oh, Phantom Menace Special was ninety nine. Oh man, I was just like I was so excited to see it in the cinema. Like I was so I was, yeah. I was buzzing so, as you know, as we all were. Like, and then you know, Jabba's Palace came along and they, they all started running around and singing and da, 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 <laughs> doing all that crazy. And I was thinking, what the what the hell is going on, mate? The, 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 the very special edition. <laughs> It's like, yeah, it's just terrible. Well, I think it's, it's not an improvement, I don't think, on uh, yeah, the Yeah, it's just up here. I think sometimes... It's almost like they're just showing up. Go on. Sorry, I was just saying, it's almost like they're just showing up. Now. It's like, oh, yeah, look what we can do. Yeah. yeah. And there, they... there's, there's a... There's a unauthorised kind of behind the scenes called The Secret History of Star Wars and the, the rumour... And it, I mean, I, I don't put much stock in it, but it's an interesting bit of like, may, maybe it is real, maybe it's not. But um, apparently, uh, the reason Lapsy Neck got taken out, because Lapsy Neck as well was, the, the lyrics were written by John Williams' son or something, weren't they? Anyway, but it was performed, it was sung by a singer who apparently had had an affair with Lucas. And the reason right. Lucas took the song out of Jedi is so that she wouldn't get any more royalties. You know, a bit like how, how <laughs> Lucasfilm and Dave Prowse don't get on because he, he apparently spilled the beans on the whole uh, Vader's Luke's father type thing, you know. No, I, 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 did all, he? All the trivia kind of fascinating behind the films, you know. It's like... Brilliant. To touch... Mike, yeah, you just reminded me of something probably very, very relevant is um, how iconic... We've, well, we've kind of spoken about that, but... With the whole um, "I am your father" scene, no one mm. ever anticipated that. Whereas everyone's tried to replicate that now. And I think, as, a kid, I did, as a kid, I didn't believe it. I was like, "No way, I don't believe it." Yeah. Well, to be like fair, that. yeah, I was like, whenever I first watched it. So I was born in 1990. So I was introduced to Star Wars whenever it was um, VHS. So we had the the box set, um, <clears throat> and I remember when I first watched that, and I was just like, "What is he? Isn't he?" And then, like, because Luke then in the scenes after questions Obi Wan, it, it it's still until I watched Return of the Jedi, I was like, oh my god, no, it's not true, it's not true, he's the bad yeah. guy. <laughs> I mean, I, I remember obviously I saw them originally when they were originally released, and the three obviously a three year gap between yeah. Empire and Jedi, and kind of all we had was the comics and stuff, and, and there was people would write in. Obviously, there's a letter section, and people people with like had all these theories. Like, I oh, know Darth Vader isn't isn't Luke's father. I remember there was this one guy who said, "No, it's probably it's probably Boba Fett because Boba Fett he could have killed Luke, but he decided to like miss him and shoot the wall and stuff." And the thing is, I think you know, I think Boba Fett is Luke's father. <laughs> you know, like, what? <laughs> <laughs> but all this like crazy stuff. And then, but obviously, you know, it's like like you say, Lucas then makes it clear in Jedi that. Uh, that is that, yeah. You because know. I, th I think it is conceivable that Vader could have been lying to wind Luke up. Sort of well, to get him, his only threat against him is Luke. So to try and sway him over to the dark side, something really emotional, it's, really impactful and personal. Yeah. I think. Um, and Light is involved as well, obviously. Yeah, uh, yeah. Twins? Yeah, yeah. Although that's where it starts yeah, to get a little bit messy. Because the story about. Go on, sorry. sorry the, story, the story behind that line of uh, or how 
that came about it was apparently in the original script. Oh, sorry, I'm, I'm full of these stupid little bits. That's all right. That's good. Um, <laughs> Carry on. Um, in the, the original script apparently said something like, Vader says something that upsets Luke. Like, that was in the shooting script. So when they came to shoot it, or, you know, presumably not on the day, presumably at some point prior, they had to come up with, like, well, okay, what upsets Luke? And that's how the whole kind of layer thing got solidified. Well, I mean, they may have been thinking about it before, but... Yeah. But, again, I I think a a lot of the original trilogy... I mean, people say that, you know, the sequel trilogy hasn't been planned out and stuff, but the original trilogy wasn't that solidly planned out either, I don't think. (laughs) <laughs> I think though what kind of worked in its favour is because something like that hadn't been done you had a blank canvas and where the sequel trilogy has potentially fallen down to a degree is um, because you've already established that canvas you have to build upon it so if you start putting stuff in there it doesn't quite um, resemble what's happened before and I don't mean in terms of story I just mean like um, the lore and like you know for example the force healing stuff it you kind know, of makes you revise and look back at other times well, I think you, say, you say about force healing and now after there's like a dark time for star wars uh sort of 85 to sort of well till the special editions came out again where it was dying and, and the only thing that kept it alive for me was, was west end games had a role-playing game and i gm'd with a few friends at college and a whole campaign and, and in in the rules for West End games, uh, the, when you're training to be a Jedi, you have to train the three skills, control, sense, and alter. And force healing was a skill. So when it came up in the sequel trilogy, I'm thinking, force healing, bloody hell, they, they, they're doing it from hmm. yeah, 1997. So to me, it wasn't even new. It was like, it was already right, yeah. in the universe for me. Yeah. You know? <laughs> but I know there's a lot of discontent about, among people that are, you know, healing but for me I, I think it's totally why not you know yeah it, I think it does make like say, you've got, go you've got to try and do something new sorry you, you've got to try and do something new you know which is fair enough because you know that's what, what it's about um, if it works like so yeah see that's I agree with that entirely and that's where I think um so the, in The Last Jedi when they introduced the whole um they can communicate communicate like and see each other in their surroundings, or at least see each other through space. I thought that, I, I thought that was really good. I really yeah. liked that. I thought that was really interesting. And The Rise of Skywalker sort of does expand on that, and I liked that as well, yeah. where they could, like, because like, they do touch. What a lot of people forgot was in The Last Jedi, they actually do have a scene where they touch hands. And even before that, oh, yeah. before that, when Ray yeah. is, like, shouting at him, oh, you're a monster, and he's like, yes, I am. And he's going, where are you? And then, the, like, the waves crash up, and then she cuts the communication. And um, he's got, like, um, water on his glove. Yes. <clears throat> so there was elements of it, and I, I, I loved that. I thought that was just fantastic. Um, and it gave Force users a new, um, well, a new skill tree, I yeah, suppose. I mean, well, I, thought, I mean, to me, it's like a form of astral projection, or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. And then a lot, a lot of other people complained that, like, Luke's force ghost caught the lightsaber. Mm-hmm. But I thought, that doesn't bother me at all, because obviously if you're a force ghost, you, you know, you're not necessarily a ghost. I mean, you know, you, you, you've got something tangible there that could conceivably catch a lightsaber. I don't see what the big deal is. Um, I think, the only, I think so, where there's a bit of backlash on that is that... Um, Whenever you get to the end of the film, spoilers. Um, whenever you well, if, if the what we've already said wasn't spoiler enough, then uh, um, yeah. But whenever you get to the end of the film, I know a lot of fans were um, a little bit disappointed that there wasn't force projections there. And then the argument has then gone further, saying, well, if there was force projections, that like they would be able to wield lightsabers, and they all kind of rally behind Ray, and they all take out Palpatine that way. Which would have been cool, and, and like imagine that concept did come up, um, but yeah, it, I suppose it just it creates a few lingering question marks where you know if it's not completely sealed up, then you kind of are. Oh, hold on, what about this? What about that? But then, as fans, we're always going to be like that, aren't we? Yeah, I mean, I, I, again, I didn't really question that. It's like it's like the whole thing with like the Goonies style um, finding 
where, you know where the throne room was. It's like I, I, when I, when I, I watched the film twice, and neither time did I think about the whole thing about you know, you've got to stand in exactly the right place, and you've got to like, how does this thing even that knife thing even come about? I, I just didn't question it. It was just like it's just a film. <laughs> it's like it's a lot of you know, um, hindsight. Know, you think about it mechanically within the universe you think yeah that doesn't kind of work it, it, or it shouldn't you know it's a flip it, it's like what are the chances of, it, of standing in exactly the right spot and, and then the thing about oh you know obviously the, the Death Star was atomized and yet you've still got um, the, the, the throne <laughs> still there and the chair's still there and you're like Do you know what? Yeah, silly, yeah. Uh, you know. Yeah. it would have been interesting to see what Luke or what Palpatine would have done in um, Jedi if Luke did grab his lightsaber and Vader wasn't there to stop because Palps could have just shivelled his or swiveled his chair around and then the lightsaber wouldn't have gone through it. Like, if it can survive an explosion, then I don't think it's going to get... Yeah, that's it. If it can survive being that's it, thrown into the centre of the Death Star, blown to, like, a kajillion million pieces, it's just, uh, yeah, I, no, no. I just That part, I just thought, no, no. Because they say in cinema, don't they, that you, you, you can uh, believe the impossible, but you won't believe the implausible. And I think a lot of that does it is bordering on implausible. If you th- if you think about it too hard, it is like, yeah, that is ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think one of the things, uh, like for me anyway, um, and I'll come on to the next question in a second, guys. But for me, with yeah the the sequel trilogy i think it for all of its faults um through whatever means i think it actually does something really really good and it brought back the old nostalgia kind of feel i think they flooded it with a lot of nostalgia sometimes a bit too much but um i tell you what though i got more nostalgia from rogue one and solo oh baby (laughs) absolutely no my, my favourite Star Wars film is actually Rogue One now because it's like it's like Star Wars but modernised filmmaking, um, and I actually quite enjoyed Solo as well. To be fair, I didn't think that was as terrible as people made out. You know, yeah, I'm I'm with you, man. I loved uh, I loved Rogue One. I thought it was fantastic, and uh, Solo. Yeah, a lot of people didn't really like it, but uh, yeah, I thought it was I thought it was good, man. I thought it was cool. I liked them both. I loved the um, train heist in Solo. I just think that's, yeah, that was that brilliant. Cool. That was cool. So yeah, just, you've kind I of just, go on. Sorry, Karen. No, sorry. I was just gonna start, just with the Last Jedi. I just with the nostalgia. I just didn't have it at all with that film. You know, I thought the attacks, the gorilla attacks. I thought were they're cool, but that was that was it, man. I thought nah. I was I was really yeah. That's obviously just my point. No, no, that's fair. That's fair. Like um, I was gonna say what your favorite Star Wars films were, but I think you've both kind of answered it. So what I'd ask you then, yeah. I'll start with you, Karen. Is um, so you said Rogue One, didn't you? Oh well, my favorite. I, I I I do really like Rogue One, but my favorite film um, is uh, Empire Strikes Back. Yeah. Okay. Why? The whole point of the fact that you think that the the, uh, the Empire's been destroyed, and then you think right at the start, you know, you've got like the, the half, like planet half, and then like the Star Destroyers turn up, the attacks come down. And they're just on the back foot, and then it's just like that. That scene in itself on Huff was 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 fantastic. It's just so good, and uh, touching it, it again dated, on, on it the at all, is it really? It hasn't dated at all. We, you can watch that now, and, it, and it, it's like it was made yesterday. Yeah, definitely, man. I think even a younger generation wouldn't notice anything different from what's newer, and you know what would be older in that particular yeah. kind of scene. I think as well, touching on that for me. Karen, whenever Empire opened, I think the opening is with the it, uh, the, the droid. Is it the Imperial droid? Gets shot down into Hoth, and you see it kind of breaking yeah. out, and then it just oh, yeah. just starts trolling around. Um, yeah, and then the, the, an Imperial Imperial probe droid. That's it. Yes, and um, and whenever then you first see the uh, Vader Star Destroyer, like. Oh my god! Whenever that the way that they did that, that they had a yeah. hidden well, basically they I think they showcased one of the um, ordinary Imperial Star Destroyers and it just started casting a shadow over it. And you're like, what's this? Yeah, they're playing the Imperial Marshal the first time. Yeah, as well, aren't they? exactly. Yeah. I think yeah, I can. Re- I can remember um, 
certain scenes within Star Wars from any one of the films, and I could probably sing the actual tune that's associated with that scene, which is kind of yeah. a bit sad. <laughs> Not at all. Not so, at Mike, all. with you, uh, you said Rogue One is your favourite film. Yeah, I, I mean, I think it depends what your sort of this, what the criteria is. I mean, I think in terms of watchability, I think Empire. I mean, Empire is quite, it is a favourite. Um, yeah. but I don't watch it very often because I find it gets a bit boring. <laughs> You know, the, the kind of yeah, day yeah. stuff. It's kind of, it's just a very much slower film. Um, whereas Rogue One, it's kind of all that nostalgia feeling. It's, it feels like old Star Wars, but it's non-stop, kind of like there's nothing to sort of get yeah. bored with. Yeah. Um, whereas when you've seen Empire like a million times, <laughs> you get a bit slow and you're thinking, yeah, I, you know, hurry up, get to the good bits, you know what I mean? <laughs> um, yeah, I, I agree. I think whenever... Whereas, Go on, sorry, sorry. I, know, I, know me, I, I almost didn't go and see Rogue One at the cinema because I was thinking, you know what, it's, it's like they're, they're milking the franchise to death. I, you know, so, I mean, I'm glad I did. But then so, I think on Tumblr, someone posted a, a gif of Vader at the end doing that thing. Oh, yeah. Um, and I was, oh, thinking, yeah. I was like, fuck, I've got to go and see that film now. <laughs> and I, yeah, I was so glad I didn't see that at the cinema. And that end bit with Vader is just like, holy crap, that is yeah. like... Peak amazing. Vader. Straight into, uh, into New Hope, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I thought that transitioned yeah. nicely as well. It was a really nice transition, because what, Vader is in the middle of it, but whenever you get to the end, and when that hallway goes dark, and then that light... Oh. I think sometimes I've, the lights over, yeah. I've, just, I've just been sitting at home in the evening... And I'll, I'll, that'll pop into my head, and I'll go be like, oh, yeah, I've got to watch that. So I'll, like, go through YouTube <laughs> just to find that one and I, scene. And i tell you what, on the theme of, like, that blockade runner and nostalgia and those white corridors, kind of the other end of that is kind of like the end of Revenge of the Sith, where they're, um, you know, uh, handing over the, the twin or whatever. I can't, I can't remember exactly what's happening. Um, but you're in that corridor again, and it's like, well, it, you know, just yeah. rebuild the set and all the rest of it and, and, and like there you are again and it's like that is that massive twang of nostalgia which you know yeah and landing on Tatooine as well yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. oh sorry taking Luke there sorry not, not the twins Luke yeah <laughs> um, I think my favourite so this one probably causes most controversy um, so it used to be Revenge of the Sith and um, up until The Last Jedi came out and right. so I love The Last Jedi. I think when I watched it in the cinema, I, I came out. Yeah. <laughs> well, the thing is, is that. You're a brave man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll get death threats God. after this. <laughs> um, yeah, for me, like, I don't know. The way that The Force Awakens um, ended, and it was going to be the first Star Wars film that it was a direct continuation after the previous film. Because um, usually there's always a time period between the films, isn't there? Um, yeah. So we, we started off, and I liked the, the way that Luke was portrayed. I think from Luke's perspective, when you've gone through so what he had to go through, and his father and everything, he kind of hit his peak, and he almost succumbed to the dark side. And then to lose everything again, and almost turn to the dark side again, when you see the flashbacks of what he... Um, kind of tried to do to Kylo Ren even the way they did that from the different perspectives and then they had the the real one like what happened at the end yeah. um, <clears throat> my, my, my biggest if, if I'm honest my biggest issues with um, Last Jedi is, is really the, the humour in it it's like I didn't like the whole phone call thing at the beginning I, I was just cringing in my seat for that bit thinking wow and then the, the, the humour with the rocks falling on the, I don't know what they're called, the, the little strange people on the island and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the fish it people. It seemed a little bit too slapstick and it took me out of the universe a little bit, you know. Yeah. Um, but then, but, if you I think did, about I did, it. I did, watch it, I did watch it again and I, I, still, I still enjoy the films, definitely enjoy them, but I, 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 there's something about, maybe there's like too many characters in them or something, I don't know, and... and yeah, and like, like Rose ends up as a bit of a spare part and stuff, and it's just like, I mean, there's unplanned, and then there's like a bit of a clusterfuck in there. It's like, um, but again, you know, it's like they're decent films, but obviously, 
when you compare them to what's come before, they're not necessarily all together, you know. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, the, the Last Jedi is interesting. I, I th- the problem I have with Last Jedi as well is that um, <laughs> it, it fights against Rise of Skywalker. It's like the two directors are having a bit of a pissing contest. It does, yeah. but then don't forget, the whole trilogy. Rise uh, wasn't like Rise. Apparently, the script was um, Colin. Oh God, I can't even say his name right. I think it's like Tramaro. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. Um. So yeah, he originally was like directing it and stuff. And I don't know if you've seen the concept art and the leaked script and stuff for what they had originally planned. So it was going to be called uh, Jewel of the Fates. And right, yeah. certain aspects that happen in terms of like the Wayfinder. It wasn't called the Wayfinder. It was a holocron, and um, it kind of burnt over Kylo Ren's face, and it, it like there's loads of stuff. Like check it out, but it kind of tied no. more into what the, happened at the end of Last Jedi and because that script was already in production. Well, it was in like writing phase and was pretty much there. And um, the Last Jedi was being filmed, so then you know the the switch around happened where they got JJ back in and um, he tweaked the script and Disney tweaked the script because I think Disney didn't really like the the original script that Colin had come up with because um, right. it was like Rose was meant to be involved a lot more and um, you know they kind of reinforced that Ray comes from nobody and I love that about The Last Jedi it kind of it, The Last yeah. Jedi for me was what the Empire was for the original is that in, tr- in true Star Wars fashion, it kind of did a Star Wars y thing, whereas, you know, you're kind of shocked. Because you think about the whole Snoke sa- uh, throne room, right? The way that Ryan Johnson wanted that was a direct reflection of the throne room in Return of the Jedi. Um, yeah. But what about if it went the other way? And that's what happened. But he threw that other little caveat in there, which was oh, what about if it went the other way? But instead of it being Ray that managed to best. Snoke, it was Kylo Ren, and I still think Snoke let him do it. <clears throat> well, one, what well, one plot twist? Oh, they obviously didn't make. Uh, well, didn't even get into the script, but I mean, it, I used to look on the rumor sites and stuff, and I, I think if they'd done this right, this could this could have worked, because it would have echoed Empire even more. But I saw one rumor where they were saying that um, basically Ray was going to be a reincarnation of Vader. And, you know, she was going to say um, to um, Luke again that I'm your father, which I thought would have been... <laughs> if I could have been so, that would have been amazing just to have that line again. You know? I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> <is it? laughs> what, were you a man I before? Thought, <laughs> I just think it was just a, a bit too, bit too left-field for most people probably to comprehend. <laughs> Yeah, and I think a lot of fans, like, everyone's entitled to their opinions and stuff, and I'm not against that. Um, but yeah. for me, I think The Last Jedi did something that was, it kind of did the unexpected, um, and it, it did do... Yeah, that. So, like, for example, yeah. everyone was expecting a... Because you had The Force Awakens, everyone was expecting, like, a mirror of Empire. But then Ryan Johnson, and uh, from in my personal yeah. opinion... Like he what wrote. Stands out for me, what stands out for me is, is the theme of uh, the Last Jedi about you know letting the past die. That there's a theme throughout that movie. I think that works really well. And I was really thinking, yeah, that that really works. I mean, it's maybe not executed in the way I would have liked to have seen. But then that's why the Rise of Skywalker then kind of instead of letting the past die, kind of pulls it all back and it's like, oh, let's get Palpatine back. And, yeah, you know, throws it back at you. And, oh, oh, it's kind of like it weakens The Last Jedi. But if you, if you look at The Last Jedi, right, um, it, just to, like, reinforce that, is Kylo Ren is actually saying exactly the same thing as what Luke's saying. They're just saying it in two completely different ways. Like, Kylo Ren's saying, let the past die. Rey wants to know yeah. about her past. But Luke is basically saying the Jedi failed... Like, um, what was his line? <clears throat> I can't remember. Um, I can't to end or something. Yeah, that was, that was it. Like, it's just, it's exactly the same kind of, well, they're basically on the same wavelength yeah. there, but they don't know it 
because they're not communicating. Which then, for Ray, I suppose, is then that conflict of, like, well, I want to know about the past. So she goes to the dark place and um, it doesn't really give her any answers uh, other than probably it doesn't matter about the past, it's about you and the reflection of her and loads of different reflections, but then that could have been something towards like a reincarnation so there's loads of versions of you or, or at the time I actually thought she was probably a clone um, <clears throat> but yeah I, th that was the oh, major yeah, I mean, reasons was, for me. There was quite an early rumour that she was a Palpatine just because she had like a British accent and stuff like that yeah. this imperial <laughs> descent sort of thing, you know what I mean? No way the thing that um, I just go on. Sorry, Karen. Sorry, dude. Sorry. Um, yeah, I just I, I just felt really disappointed in the Last Jedi. I just sort of went to the cinema, already hyped up, and I sort of almost walked out thinking, did I fall asleep for that film? And just <laughs> woke up at the end, you know. And oh. you know, each to their own. You know, that's cool, man. You guys like Last Jedi and stuff, but uh, yeah, I just just to me, it just wasn't a Star Wars film. It didn't have the feel of a Star Wars film, and it just felt like there was loads of random adventures they were going on that just made no sense yeah I, th I think that's probably one of the biggest criticisms that it gets is the canto bite whole like the, they spend a large proportion of the film in canto bite and they actually don't get what they want and they come across that smuggler dude who inadvertently has yeah. what they want and i know a lot of people were kind of against that but i could understand what um Ryan johnson was trying to do with the whole like to reinforce the you don't have to come from a lineage name. You don't have to be a Skywalker or a Palpatine or whatever to be someone famous or to make a difference. Because the boy at the end, the broom boy, like he, he yeah. uses the force. What was that to... all about, man? Well, broom that, boy. that... Where's he gone? Broom boy? Yeah, exactly. And the, the rise of Palpatine, I thought, oh, oh, here he comes, broom boy. <laughs> and it's like, no, it's not broom boy. It's just nothing. It's just nothing. You know, I thought... <sighs> yeah, I still bought the um, the Blu-ray of Rise of Skywalker to complete my collection. So <laughs> I know it's, it's on the shelf, man. Yeah, exactly. But to be fair, I mean, to be fair, there, there was no way like the Rise of Skywalker was going to meet my expectations of closing the saga after forty odd years. Yeah, yeah. But the fact it was weakened by not continuing threads started by the last jedi I thought that was to me that was the most disappointing and even like saying that you know you're going from the threads from really should be from and um, bloody the force awakens they should go well, yeah, all yeah. The way through, and it just kind of goes and it just burns out and, yeah yeah so yeah there's some, there's some weird and, and i do wonder about the politics behind the scenes i mean there's people saying that like kathleen kennedy's kind of to blame for sort of Filmmaking by committee and stuff, and you know, and well, there's loads of rumors. Sorry. There's loads of rumors that um, her contract apparently is coming to an end. Um, and on May the fourth, <laughs> Revenge of the Sith. From what I've heard, she she was hands off of the Mandalorian as well, and obviously the Mandalorian's been doing pretty well. And I, I love the Mandalorian, yeah. superb. Yeah. Yeah, Gotta well, love Ben Mando. Got there's, there's a couple of filler episodes, I thought, but it, on the whole, I, I did enjoy it. I think the filler yeah. episodes work, though, because then it, it reinforces the last two episodes. If you haven't seen The Mandalorian, people, check it out. It's on Disney+. Plus. It's fantastic. Yeah. Oh, it's awesome. Just think, when, if, you like, if you really like Rogue One, people, then you should definitely watch The Mandalorian. Yeah. So, um, guys, I was going to ask... Um, what your first memory is of Star Wars, like how were you introduced to it? What were your initial thoughts? And um, start with you, Mike. Um, that's a tough one because I, I would have been because um, I think in the UK I would have seen it because it got released Christmas '77 in the UK. Um, so I'd imagine I would have seen it probably January, February '78, which means I would have been still six um, so that really the main thing I remember actually is getting Star Wars figures for either for my birthday or the, or the next Christmas and which kind yeah, of yeah. rekindled my interest in oh yeah I saw that film back you know, earlier in the year or whatever Although presumably it never really left me because it definitely left a massive impression but obviously 
you know, it was the Star Wars figures in the comics, because again, it's like three, three years between um, each film is like, as a child, it's just an eternity. Um, yeah. Kind of like filling your time with like, you know, collecting stuff and like, you just can't get enough of it. And like, you know, and obviously with no internet back then, you, you were lucky to like see like a crappy little black and white photo in the newspaper or something. <laughs> You cut it out. Yeah, um, some, some guy dressed as Darth Vader would would visit Woolworths and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> and all that stuff as a kid, you, you just absorb it and soak it all up, and it all be part of like the experience. Which today, you know, anyone can dress up as Darth Vader. Back then, it's like to get like a screen or anywhere near a screen accurate costume. It was something special, you know. Whereas yeah. now you can buy stormtrooper costumes on Amazon, and it's just kind of like, yeah, okay. It's yeah. Like, it's not. It's kind yeah. of. What would be it's yours? It's not quite oh, sorry. special anymore. You know what I mean. <laughs> so no, I, I would say, I would say that that's that's my my first memories of not necessarily about the film, but about getting sucked into the merchandise. Yeah, <laughs> I think the merch actually was awesome. Um. Kieran, what was what was your like kind of well same question really? Yeah, man, um, boys. Yeah, it was. Uh, I think it was it was Christmas time. I was um, I was I was born in eighty one, so I was probably about about five or six, I think, when I, I think I watched Star Wars, and I just remember sitting there on uh, Christmas Day and uh, just just watching this 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 ginormous ship just fly up above out of the TV. And then the Star Destroyer come over the top, and I just kept looking up like above me, you know, like trying to see inside <laughs> the TV. It's like, what is this? This is just wow. lasers firing everywhere. I just thought to myself, this is this is the coolest thing ever. Yeah. And I just instantly just fell in love with it from there. You know, it was fantastic. See, I don't have a a standout memory of whenever I I initially got into it, um, but I must have. I remember having the, the like I say the original trilogy uh, VHS, and I used to always go and put it on if you know I had some time in the evening after school and what have you. Because I think I was introduced maybe in ninety five, ninety six. So I was like, I was yeah. Well, I was was born in nineteen ninety, um, so that was the real like being five and six. That was the first time I kind of. Um, could concept something and like really grasp it and get into it like my 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 son is six and he's like going through the same thing so he'll jump between things and he's now started to fixate on certain things star wars being one of them he's a massive fan Brilliant. of kylo ren um good man, good man. Kylo he, ren is cool. uh, pardon Sorry to interrupt, man. I said no. Kylo Ren is, is cool. Yeah. I thought, before so I thought, he's a dude. <laughs> he is. And, like, we'll leave it there. We'll leave it there. Whenever I went home at Christmas, we took Riley to see The uh, the Rise of Skywalker with my mum and sister. And it got to the end. He was sitting beside me, and he's he's watching it. And he, he looked at me, and he was like, is that girl Ray going to die? And I was like, well, you just have to watch. And he kind of, he was a little bit kind of shocked by it. And then... Um, ben obviously does what he does um, and I just looked at Riley and he just had floods of tears in his eyes and I was like what's up little man he's like I don't want Kylo Ren to die <laughs> and I was just like oh um, I think his memory and stuff of like his first uh, experience and memories of Star Wars is going to be like more memorable for me than my own ones but to touch on your point Mike I, I do remember the merch and I was fascinated with the figures and I had a Millennium Falcon sort of toy ship and the, the sort of back third of it opened up and you had everything that was in the Millennium Falcon from the, you know, the um, board game yeah, that they have. You must have, have like, the, the second wave toys. Did you have like yeah. the muscle looking? Oh, yeah, they were yeah. Shocking, they were. Yeah, yeah, I did. I, I remember kind of collecting some of those as well um, and this was, I would have been in my 20s but I, I was thinking I was so into it again. <laughs> it was like really in my childhood, and then obviously with the re-release of the special edition. It must have been yeah. during the re-release then that that like I started getting loads of the toys. I remember having I was obsessed with the lightsabers, but I I was a bit yeah. OCD in it that I had to have a lightsaber that went all the way in, so I could like put it on a hilt <laughs> and then strut around with it, and then like get it out, flick it, you know, and it comes like as if it lights up. You do all the sound effects. 
the merch was massive. I remember having um, yeah, absolutely. yeah, Luke's green one. That was my favorite. Like just the design yeah. of that and like the sound effects on it were just awesome. Um, I've got um, a fair a fair amount of Star Wars figures and ships as well that I uh, collected and that my parents gave me and got off car boot sales and like other people just saying, oh, do you want, my, my lad doesn't play this anymore, do you want it? Like the Millennium Falcon, the Atat. Nice. Brilliant, yeah. dude. They're, they're really, probably really worth. Cool. And I've got them all in a nice, a nice uh, ca- a glass cabinet now. Oh, yeah, that's, that's probably the best idea for it, keeping them in good nick. Yeah, yeah, definitely, man. So you guys have anything else Star Wars related you'd like to throw in? Um, I, um, I went to te- I went to Woolworths once to buy a mobile phone and I came out with a toy fighter. <laughs> <laughs> not, not a giant toy fighter, obviously, but it was pretty big. The toy when you pressed the bit in the middle, it all exploded. The wings all came up. Really? Oh yeah. yeah. I d- <laughs> but uh, funny you say that because. No, um, like for the last number of years, uh, uh, Halloween. I love Halloween, but I've always, yeah. um, whenever I was younger, um, I once got a Anakin Skywalker costume from um, uh, Revenge of the Sith, and I even had the the hairstyle at the time, but I couldn't curl it because my hair is too fine. So I just looked like a <laughs> like a a really weird looking girl in a Jedi outfit. Um, <laughs> so it was probably what fifteen, maybe yeah, because. Maybe 14, 15, because the film had just come out, so Revenge of the Sith. And, um, yeah, like, recently, I, I've kind of had that nostalgia to get a costume. Um, so I was looking at a Kylo Ren one, so I'd love to just, especially for Riley's sake. And, um, Definitely. <clears throat> yeah, like, I don't want one that's the £40 one where it's, you know, really lightweight. And so I priced it all up, and if you buy the proper... Um, replica boots to the um, like trousers, the overgown, even the cloak, the mask. It costs well over three hundred and fifty quid. So I'm gonna start saving and get Stop it. Saving man, <laughs> yeah. I well, think the, it'd be awesome. Got, well, sorry, Karen. Uh, sorry, my uh, my lovely lady and I got married um, two years ago, September. Congrats. And oh, thank you, dude. And uh, Hal, she says. Um, I said, uh, obviously, I've got to wear a suit. And she's like, yeah. I was like, well, can I wear a Darth Vader suit? <laughs> <laughs> like, you, a, you know, like yes. you said, man, a good two and a half thousand pounds worth of suit or something, you know. <laughs> That'd be unreal. You'd like, have to rent it or something, wouldn't you? Oh, it'd be incredible, wouldn't it? But uh, I, st- I, I didn't, but, uh, you know, I, st- I still look dashing. Nice, nice. Did you, um, <laughs> I can imagine for, like, the first dance song, you probably like. Doo, 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 it was um, when, when we when we entered into the um, when we came into the reception bit after we were we were introduced and uh, we had the Imperial Death March playing. Oh, that's awesome! <laughs> <laughs> I had that. I have that for my um, ringtone for my mum. I love my mum. Just to <laughs> clarify, it's because she's got Star Wars for me, so it works. It's kind of it was mum. Yeah. Yeah. Nice link. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> nice save, nice, nice save. <laughs> did, did, did everybody actually like Jar Jar Binks? Or, like, no? Because I thought... <laughs> I, I've totally forgotten about Jar Jar Binks. <laughs> good, good, good. That's you all right. That's you all right. just give him Mike nightmares again? He's not going to sleep um, for weeks? Oh, I was going to say, before, uh, there's one last thing from me. Um, <laughs> I have got quite a lame claim to fame, and it's really right. tenuous as well. Uh, actually, I've got quite a few. Because um, I, I, in sort of mid, the mid nineties, I was in London doing my best to break into the film industry, um, and I came close-ish. But on my way, I did I did meet um, a guy called Kieran Shah, who was a stunt Ewok, and actually he was in the Force Awakens as the thing on the thing um, that tries to capture BB-8, um, the, the little midget thing. Anyway. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, so that, that's interesting that he's and um, that he's still doing. And he, and he was in Raiders of the Lost Ark, I think. Um, anyway, so there was that. I've, I've worked with Declan Mulholland, who was the guy under Jabba in Star Wars. Um, so there's a, there's a film called The Pig's Family, which I did sound recording on. So yeah, quite pleased that I'm 
kind of met, it was quite a grumpy old bastard actually. <laughs> 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 it wasn't very pleasant to work with. Um, but yeah, it's a lame claim to fame. And then I, I got um, a few days on the set of Wind in the Willows at Shepperton, and that, that was directed by Terry Jones and the crew. Basically, the, the, the DP on that was David Tattersall, and basically, from what I heard, the rest of the crew on that film, Wind in the Willows, went on to work on The Phantom Menace. Oh. So although I was one of them, um, you know, I, I was kind of like the intern, just like, this is, this is how this is a real film set works and stuff. Um, and I, I love being, I felt so at home at Shepperton. It's like, it's just, ah, oh, it's just so aggravating that it's such a tough industry to break into. But anyway, um, <laughs> yes, there are my lame claims to fame that I just need to, felt, I felt I needed to get those out there. No, no. I met, um, I went, I went, I met Jeremy Buddha. Don't you, sorry? I, I met Jeremy Buddha. I met, oh, cool, I met, yeah, yeah. I met the Fet Man. Um, yeah. He was doing a sign-in in, in Videodrome in Worcester. And uh, me and my mate, uh, Ross, went there. And um, we went into Videodrome. And I walked in, I just gave him the, the devil horns. And he gave me the devil horns back. <laughs> and uh, he, signed, he signed my uh, Empire Strikes Back DVD. Well, it And he asked me, like, oh, what do you do and everything? I said, oh, I'm at college doing, doing HND filmmaking and really enjoying it. And he was like, oh, wow, one day I might be one of your films then. <laughs> and I suddenly thought, I was just like, yes, yes, definitely. You know, this is amazing. So I suppose that's my little Star Wars claim to fame then. I don't have one. So if you're listening, Jeremy, <laughs> I'm, I'm ready when you are. Yeah, he's a, he's an avid listener of our podcast. Just saying. <laughs> <Yay! laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, to answer your question, um, Kieran, when I was a kid, so the the Jar Jar thing, when I was oh. a kid, so when the Phantom Menace came out, I was eight, <clears throat> and I remember I think I went to the cinema to watch it, and I actually did like Jar Jar. I thought in the original trilogy it was C three PO who was that kind of quirky comic, like in inverted like quirky comic, um, and and um, yeah, Jar Jar was just something fresh. He was just dim witted, and he kind of. I don't know, at the time, for me, it was like, oh, this guy's, like, so stupid and crazy. I love him. As, as time's gone on, I've learned more and more about it. And I know that George Lucas put a lot of, like, um, I can't even think of the right word. He put a lot of intensity into hoping that Jar Jar was really going to land. He expected Jar Jar to land, and fans love him. Well, it was a massive, it was actually a big risk, because I think it was one of the first, like, CGI... I know, I know uh, Armoured Best was obviously still like, half the suit one and stuff, but it's one of the first, like, CGI characters, you know, they were experiments. So as per usual, they were, they were still pushing the envelope with Jar Jar, but yeah. the character... My biggest gripe, and I, mean, I didn't particularly see it as racist, I know other people did, but I did find that... Accent just really annoying, you know. Yeah. Me thought that I think. Yeah. What are you about to like that? No. You know, if it had been a slightly different character, you know, you know, the sort of the stepping in the poo and stuff could have been amusing, but as it was, it was just irritating. You know? Yeah. If in doubt, go to a poo joke in it or a fart joke or something. <laughs> <in> it. <laughs> it's what? just good that Liam Neeson and um, Hugh McGregor just just. Carried it through and through, man. Yeah. Mm. Liam Neeson, for me, personally, I love Liam Neeson. He's from the same country as me, just so you know. Um, and uh, <laughs> that's not why. For me, it was, it was uh, I, I liked um, Darth Maul, and I actually quite liked yes. the battle droids were quite cool. I mean, not the little things they fly about on and stuff. And I hated their voices, but just, again, the production design, right? I mean, yeah, I mean, I think every one of those films, is, every one of the nine films has got great production design mm. yeah they've always been ahead of the game haven't they always you know yeah. always been like spectacular special effects even though the Phantom Menace at first I remember seeing the cinema thinking wow that, that's like CGI and that's, that looks that looks alright actually you know and the droid battle at the end and then you watch it yeah. sort of a few years ago and you're like eee. yeah yeah that's, that looks like yeah. a computer game man it looks so bad but pioneering at the time obviously I do love going back and watching the prequels yeah. every so often. Um, like I said, up until the last few years, Revenge of the Sith was my favourite. 
I think it was really should, should, should dark. We, um, should, should, we, should, should we do what, what is our favourite of each of the trilogies? Yeah, if you want to quickly do that. So, so like, I don't know how much time we got. Um, so, yeah. so like, I mean, I, I find it really difficult to have a favourite of the prequel trilogy. <laughs> I remember at the time, um, my favourite was actually Attack of the Clones, which is normally, I think, one everyone loves to hate the most. But the reason I think the reason I like it the most is although it's like incredibly wooden characterizations and stuff a lot, a lot of it what I liked about it was all, all the fighting and all, you know they introduced some new vehicles and stuff and blah 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 and I suppose in a way I'm stuff okay. hadn't seen um, so, so that's my favourite from the prequels um, the original trilogy is Empire um, well I have to say I did see all all six, I think it was at the IMAX a few years ago. Oh, nice. And watching them all back to back, you realise how much kind of better Star Wars is. It's really weird um, because this is much more of a solid. I suppose it's just like it hasn't got any slow bits, right? Whereas Empire has got slow bits. Hmm. But but historically, Empire has always been my favourite of the original trilogy. And then the, the sequel yeah. trilogy is a, is a tough one, um, but I think I'd have to say The Force Awakens simply because it did. Yeah. re-establish it in a quite a good way um, you know it set a lot of things up which okay, didn't necessarily go the way I might have thought they would have gone but um, you know it's a d- decent job of kind of you know bringing it back from sort of the dead as it were hmm. um, yeah. what about you Karen? yeah I'd, 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 um, I'd say probably with the prequels I don't know it's a toss up to it probably maybe Revenge of the Sith I'd say about those three um, Empire Strikes Back. Even though I love all, I love all the original trilogy equally, really. But I think my favourite is Empire. And then, yeah, again, sorry to say as Mike, like, I agree with Mike. It's, uh, it's Force Awakens, really. Fair. I think <laughs> I'm probably the only one that um, is well ha- ha- has a different opinion. <laughs> I would agree. Like, with for me personally, the Revenge of the Sith was my favourite throughout the prequels, um, simply because I think the acting slightly improved. Um, especially off the back of Attack of the Clones. I know it gets criticised massively for its script and um, the dialogue. Um, and then, like, out of the original trilogy, that's probably my hardest one to pick. Because as a kid, I absolutely loved Return of the Jedi, like a whole redemption and th- that particular scene where Vader's goating in Luke. Um, and, you know, he's like, Oh, you have a sister. And, like, and, and, like he just goes ah, and jumps out and the music that plays that whole like emperor music it's just yeah. really eerie yeah. and then Luke yeah so but now as an adult I absolutely adore Empire because it's, it's probably quite dark as well like by the end yeah. <clears throat> um, and then yeah The Last Jedi would be the the one for me in the sequel trilogy cool. anyway guys I appreciate you guys coming on here? It's been lovely. Yeah, thank you very much for having me on. This is great. No, it's all right. Thanks. Um, you guys got anything else very quickly you want to say before you go? Keep loving Star Wars. <laughs> just keep May loving Star Wars, man. Just, just... Go on, Mike. May the Force be with you. Always. <laughs> this will come out on the 4th, so may the 4th be with you. Uh, may the 4th be with you, dudes. <laughs> Take care, guys. Thanks very much. Yeah, thank you very much, man. Thanks, bye. Thanks, bye. See you, bye, bye, bye. Thanks, guys. Hope you enjoyed that. Um, yeah, really, really fun. Really good. Really enjoyed that one. As ever, please give us a like, give us a subscribe, um, and leave a comment. If you want to leave a comment, leave a comment saying uh, what your favourite Star Wars moment was, what your favourite film is, um, and yeah. Thanks, guys. Take care.